from Dublin to Cleveland production. Hello and welcome to From Dublin to Cleveland. I am Logan Howard. Unfortunately, I am not joined by Brendan Thomas Merritt today. He is not here with us. He is off living his best life now, as Joel Osteen would say. Um, but I am joined by someone else. I am not alone today. I am joined by my friend from Indiana, Adrian. How's it going, Adrian? I'm doing well. How about you, Logan? I'm doing well. Doing well. Um, so we should probably give you some backstory of how I know Adrian. Um, so do you want to tell or you want me to? Well, I have a very good way of how to start it, okay? So I'll, okay, I'll start all right. It. I'll let you do it. <laughs> okay. So, it all started actually in the middle of a war, okay? So, there was the red side and the blue side. And so, um, I'm pretty sure that we were the red side. And I was shoot mowing down enemies left and right. Well, not very well. <laughs> but, um, and like, recruitments kept pouring in from the flanks. And people just kept dying. And so, I, I um, looked over... And I saw my sister's friend, and she was just shooting down people like no big deal. And then I saw this dude that was with her, and I don't exactly remember what this dude was doing, but in that moment I thought, I don't think he's ever done um, very much laser tag. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the first <laughs> informal time I met Logan. But actually, the first, first like, actual time I would say, like, I met Logan was this summer at camp. Um, he was my cabin leader for um, a week. And then yes. I worked. I volunteered, <laughs> I, I volunteered um, for a weekend with him. And then he was my counselor again for a weekend. Yeah. So that's how I so met. Needless to say, he's been stuck with me a lot. <laughs> I have been. <laughs> so yeah, that is that that is more or less the story. I don't remember the the whole um, laser tag thing, but I'm not have I not nor have I ever been good at laser tag. So. Well, anyway, uh, let's get into what we want to do today. So we're going to do some quizzes that Adrian has found for us. Um, and then we're going to do some, like, just talk about media we enjoy. And then we'll get into our Bible section like we normally do. So uh, I believe you said the first quiz we're going to do is this 50% Marvel, 50% Disney quiz, right? Is that the one you said? Yep. All right. Okay, let's see how this goes. So, uh, first question is, uh, choose a superpower you've dreamed of having. Telekinesis, an elemental power, super strength, time mm -hmm. travel, flight, or super speed. Okay. So, for me, I would pick time travel as, like, a superhero one mm. because I could, um, I could, like, stop time and do things, and then with that, I could technically have super straight, super speed and telekinesis and stuff like that. Uh, I see. So you're playing 3D chess here. Um, <laughs> I always I, play 3D chess. Uh, I went with an elemental power, probably just like fire, or water, ice, or something along those lines. That would be super epic. Um, being able to basically be uh, yeah. a avatar because you get to air bend or metal bend or earth bend. Um, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next question. Pick an OG Disney character. Goofy, Donald Duck, Minnie Mouse, Pluto, Daisy Duck, or Mickey Mouse. So, I would say I'm probably Donald Duck. I would probably choose Donald Duck mm. in that, um, first of all, he's the one we I always remember watching the most when we were growing up. But also, yeah. um, I just I just think he's got that slapstick comedy that I think I embody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm with you. I went, I went Donald Duck, too. 
Uh, the rest of them didn't really do much for me growing up, but Donald Duck was Donald Duck was enjoyable. I'd I'd watch Donald Duck things. I wish Bugs Bunny was on there, but he's not Disney, so kind of stuck with Donald Duck. <laughs> uh, all right, next one. Choose a Marvel movie. Iron Man 3, Avengers Endgame, Black Panther, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Far From Home, or Avengers Infinity War. I would pick um, Spider-Man Far From Home, as I have not seen um, Avengers Endgame or Guardians of the Galaxy, so I can't say whether I like those or not. But I just like um, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, so. Nice. Uh, it's end game for me. Um, end game is just the end of it. I don't really understand why we continue to make movies other than it's a cash cow, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, end game, end game was the end. It was the end. I mean, that's of a lot of franchise. A story. <laughs> probably say that for like Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Choose title. a Disney plus category. Classic Disney. Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, National Geographic, or absolutely none at all. <laughs> I like that option. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll have these, and I'll have, like, the things I've watched from them. My favorite category is probably Pixar. So I'm going to choose Pixar. All right, you're going with Pixar. I have to go Star Wars. It's, it's my thing. I can't can't go away from star wars star wars is the greatest it's the best um national geographic strong second honestly because i do enjoy me some national geographic because you can see nature in all of its awesomeness so uh, that's probably number two <laughs> uh yeah. all right next question choose an og avenger captain america black widow good old hawkeye Okay, let, let's see if um, Logan can guess which let's one see. I'm going uh, to do. Hulk, after he Iron Man, up. Thor. Uh, I'm feeling like you're a Hawkeye guy. I feel like you'd pick Hawkeye. That's my guess. Yeah. You, Hawkeye all the way. You got cut out. But yes, you are right. It is Hawkeye. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Um, <sighs> and you're Captain America, well, right? Yeah, it's Captain America. I I really like uh I like certain elements of Thor as his story's gone through, but original Thor was just annoying. I was not a fan of original Thor. He was he was dumb. Oh boy. All right, next one. Choose a Disney princess. All right, Disney princess time. We've got Belle, Jasmine, Mulan, Snow White, Ariel, and Rapunzel. Well, this one's an easy one for me. Um, it's Rapunzel. It's Rapunzel. This Rapunzel. one's an easy one for me too. It's uh, it's Mulan. I have to yeah. pick Mulan. <laughs> epic the epic songs, you know. It, Mulan's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, I um like um just like the general like plot of Tangled, it's probably my third favorite Disney hmm. princess movie. But, okay, yeah. nice. My other two favorite are Brave and um, Enchanted. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good. Um, yeah, it's, it's Mulan or nothing for me. <laughs> Uh, all right, Marvel villain now. Um, we've got Loki, we've got Ultron, we've got Killmonger, we've got Hela, we've got Thanos, and we've got Red Skull. Hmm. This is a hard one. Because my favorite yeah. part of Ragnarok Rark was actually Hela. Because she was, she was a good villain. Um, the backstory on how she got there was a little bit weak. But she was a good villain. And then Loki's a good villain, too. Hmm. I'll yeah. probably say Hela. All right. Uh, I was between uh, Thanos and Loki. 
Um, and because I feel like Loki's way too much of an anti-hero than he is really a villain, at least now, I went with Thanos because the dude is just inevitable yeah. and is coming for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. Choose a Disney movie. The Lion King, Frozen, Beauty and the Beast, Maleficent, Big Hero 6, or Tangled? Ooh, this is an easy one for me. I'm going for Big Hero 6. Um, Ooh. It, um, I just like, like the whole plotline and stuff. Um, and they, yeah. they did decent at the twist villain. It wasn't the best that they've done, but it was pretty good. Um, but also, um, it's actually the first um, computer animated um, Marvel movie out there. Yeah. It was a great. It was a great movie. I really enjoyed that one. I liked the soundtrack too. It was a good movie. So yeah, I picked. Yeah. I picked Big Hero Six too. Good. Good choice. All right. Lastly, choose a Marvel character out of these: Spider Man, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, or Ant Man. Hmm. Well, I'm going between Scarlet Witch and Ant Man. And that's a hard one. I think I'm going to go Scarlet Witch. Her arc, at least from the movies I've watched, so um, from like the beginning up to Infinity War, I think that's my probably my favorite one of those choices. Definitely. Um, I feel like I'm going to go Spider-Man here. I just, I really enjoy. He's a pretty solid his, choice. Uh, yeah. I just have to go with Spider Man. All right. So results. What you fifty percent Marvel, fifty percent Disney. What'd you get? I am Captain Marvel and Aladdin. I am so confident and strong, while also being approachable and loving. You are the perfect friend. It could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> I had a uh, Black Widow and Olaf. I have a bubbly, warming, and kind personality. <laughs> While still being hardworking and determined, these things are so vague that they can be somewhat. That does sound like you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, that was our first quiz: fifty yeah. percent Marvel, fifty percent Disney. The next one is we're going to do write Avengers five, and they will tell us what the critics think of our ideas. So, first question of that one mm -hmm. is. Who is going to be the main villain? Is it going to be Kang the Conqueror, M Mephist Mephistos, the Thunderbolts, or Doctor Doom? What's your choice, Adrian? My choice is, um, this is the only, um, the, this is the only question out of any of them that I have no idea who they are. So I just went with Kang the Conqueror because... <laughs> He's got a bl uh, cool blue mask thing. We'll go with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I went with Doctor Doom because I know who Doctor Doom is, and I don't know what he does. I just know his name. Um, so cool. I'm going with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to the next question. Which characters are going to have the most attention? Scarlet Witch and Spider-Man, Falcon and Thor, Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner, or Star-Lord and Rhodey? Okay, so this one's easy for me. Um, I picked Scarlet Witch and Spider-Man. Mm. Um, I don't like new Thor, at least since Ragnarok. And I don't like Star-Lord, so. Yeah. <laughs> and Captain Marvel is, eh. Yeah. I think I'm with you. I don't think I can pick any of the rest of them. The, the Spider-Man and Scarlet Witch will tell the most of a story. The rest of them are more background characters to just strange, weird characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. N next one. Choose a tragic event to take place towards the end. Hulk is reawoken and becomes unstable. Nebula dies. Steve Rogers' monument is destroyed. Or Peter loses Aunt May. Hmm. Ooh, that's a hard one. I feel like for like a singular movie story arc, the one that would have the most impact 
would be Peter Lou the Ant Man. But if they're going if they're trying to set up a yeah. second movie or actually a sixth movie, um Hulk is reawoken and becomes unstable would probably make the most sense. So I think I'm going to have to hmm. go with Peter loses Ant Man. Okay. Uh just for the fun of it, I'm gonna go with Steve Rogers Monument being destroyed. That's the big evil that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Critics are not going to like it. All right. Pick a new character to receive the spotlight. We've got She Hulk. We've got Monica Rambeau, Shang-Chi, or Kamala Khan. Hmm. So I think I'm going to do process of elimination here. Not Kamala Khan because she's too young. <laughs> um, I feel like. If you're going to be a superhero, like, in a, in a movie, um, you should probably be at least, like, 17 or 18. Um, She-Hulk, well, we already have a Hulk, so we don't need another okay. one. Which gives us between Sha- Sha- yeah. Sha- Sha- Shang-Chi and Monica Rambeau. Ooh, they're both... From what I know about them, they're both pretty decent characters. Uh, I'm going to go Shang-Chi. Same. I'm going to go with Shang-Chi too. I really enjoyed The Ten Rings. It was a good movie. Um, which is kind of... It, that was when it was normal for for uh, Marvel to be still good movies. So, yeah, that, was, that one was a good one. All right. What happens during the post credit scene? A flash forward revealing Wanda Maximoff turning evil. The X-Men are revealed. A scroll secret invasion is revealed, or the villain was working for Galactus all along. Hmm. So, to be, um, I, this is a hard one. So, between, I'm between Wanda Maximoff and a scroll invasion, because, I mean, Hmm. they both could have very interesting, like, results in like the future where where at i think the one the maximoff turning evil would be more of like more like another like infinity war or something a very strong villain fighting all the good guys but the secret scroll invasion mm. could be interesting for like something um more like um espionage based yeah. I'm going to go Seeker Invasion. So I had a different thought. I feel like going for the villain working for an, a bigger evil is always fun. So that sets up another movie. So I'm going to go with the villain working for Galactus all along. That, that was my choice. All right. Choose a bold plot twist to include in your movie. Someone has been a scroll this whole time. The antagonist was trying to save the world from an even bigger threat. A hero switches to the dark side. The villain has been secretly influencing the MCU for years. Um, I'm going to say, since we know, since there's going to be a post credit scene about the scroll invasion, we won't do that. Um, hero mm. switches to the dark side. Sounds like the last question about Wanda. I'm going to say the antagonist is trying to save the world from an even yeah. bigger threat. Okay. That's good. Um... I'm going to go, just because it feels like it's always a Marvel thing. The villain's been influencing things for a long time, and you just don't know it. <laughs> oh dear, Sam, that's 2.0. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Finally, choose a character to sacrifice themselves. Thor, Doctor Strange, Star-Lord, nobody. This is the MCU. <laughs> It's true, though. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's literally a song about if nobody dies. <laughs> I, I think I've heard that. Um, so, let's see. <laughs> I um, don't really want to say nobody, because often character sacrifices are what really drives the story forward. I think Doctor Strange could have, like, be very interesting to continue to explore from at least what I've watched up to. 
I don't like modern Thor anymore. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I haven't liked Star Wars, like, ever. Ever since I started, I've, I've seen a film with him in it. So I'm going to say, so, say, say Star Lord. I'm going to go with, Doc, go with Doctor Strange, because I do not like their new movie that they had, because it was very demonic and very evil, and you know what? I don't need that in my life. Kill them off. <laughs> don't need my good guys going down dark paths and doing evil things so sayonara maybe they'll turn back in the next movie uh all right so what what did the critics say about yours (laughs) okay mine was one of the best mcu films yet i got a 95 percent on rotten tomatoes but they're even calling it the most exciting avengers film so far no way. I got the exact same thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we didn't answer the same stuff. <laughs> Maybe they'll be like, oh, I feel like we can't take this quiz that seriously anymore. <laughs> Maybe one of them's from um, the perspective of Wanda, and the other one's the perspective of Peter Parker. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, that has been our our fun um, quiz time of the episode, and now we'll just discuss a little bit about uh, some of our media choices. So I guess we'll start with what is your like genre of music that you go for? What is my what genre is, like, of music? <clears throat> Top notch music. I would probably be yeah. um, Christian pop. Although Christian EDM as well. Okay, nice. Um, so mine's probably uh, like Christian rock. Um, I don't know, like Christian, I want to say Christian metal, but I don't really think Skillet really fits in Christian metal, even though it kind of does. It's a little heavier Christian music than you'd listen to normally. Um so that's usually where I f- where I fit in. I also really enjoy um, like Ooh, instrumental, instrumental songs. Nice. They're really cool because um, you don't have any words to them. You can make your own words to them, and they also feel yeah. just like epic. So that's usually my uh, my go to. Um, all right, how how about if we're moving on from music? What about books? Like, what is your genre of books? I that you prefer want to read? my favorite is. Um is low fantasy. So whereas high fantasy Lovely. is like um, Gerald R. Tolkien or um, Narnia, low fantasy is when you take a magical character and put them in the real world. Or you take magical elements and you put them in the okay. real world. Okay, I see where you're doing. Yeah. Um, mine's probably science fiction so i really enjoy most of my fiction stuff is is like star wars um one the one i'm really like want to get and get into is c.s lewis's space trilogy um i've heard good things about it so i want to read that one that's my uh on my agenda to read this year um i gotta find (laughs) it first but i think amazon has it i mean they probably do (laughs) Um, so that's on my that's on my list to read. So science fiction. Uh, I also enjoy reading um, like Christian books, the ones that have good theology and um, teach you good things. Um, and usually, I have a select few authors that I'll read from that uh, give good uh, theology and you know good wisdom. So I usually read those. So those are usually my my two reading categories. Um, okay, what about movies? What is your, like, enjoy- most enjoyable movies? My most enjoyable watch? movies are the movies that are cliche, and they know it. So, um, like, <laughs> Enchanted okay. and Disenchanted, like, those movies are so mm-hmm. brimming full with just Disney cliche after Disney cliche, and they, like, embrace and they're like, yeah, and, like, they're basically just like making fun of all the other ones, but they do it in this really good way. Mm. Um, my other favorite nice. one, um, it's it's a bit um difficult to figure out one because we don't watch like 
that many movies at my house. But I also um, yeah. really like to watch, um, like, um, can't think of that. I like the um, mid, mid-ish Pixar's. So, like, Inside Out, Brave. Okay. Um, there's a couple other ones. Those are yeah. really good, and I like those. Yeah, you usually can't go wrong with Pixar ones. At least the, um, the older ones. I don't know. I don't know. Pick Pixar ones and DreamWorks are really good. Um, one we saw the other, like a couple weeks ago, was Ron's Gone Wrong. That one was rather entertaining uh, for just a little robot that every kid has, and the one kid doesn't have it, and it's a broken one. That one was very entertaining as a as a uh, show. Um, but for the most part, uh, it's probably science fiction or fantasy for me. Um, I really have been getting into Lord of the Rings. I never watched Lord of the Rings growing up. Um, so I've been watching those and they've been pretty, uh, pretty good. Every time I read Proverbs now, I read it like I'm um, like from Lord of the Rings because it's like my son, do this and do this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is just so great. I, I, I haven't seen any of the, um, I haven't seen any um, Tolkien adoptions of movies, but the books, they're like, mm. Um, they're like the, that, like a Proverbs at some point style of writing, but they're quite good. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe a podcast episode needs to be done on Logan reading <laughs> Proverbs like he's from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> that could be fun. Maybe that might be a bit too much on the nose, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that's my, uh. That's my movie choice. How about, um, do you watch any TV shows? Do you, you have any type of TV um, shows? You we don't really want, to watch? I, we watch even less TV shows than we do movies. But if we do watch one, yeah, um, they're usually like classic ones. So Beverly Hillbillies, the classic monster TV show. Oh, that was good. Um, Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Um, the, the Get Smart TV show. Oh, those are good. They take... Have, have yeah. you ever seen the um, Get Smart TV show? Yeah. Um. Possibly. Basically, they're um, they're probably nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties around that era, but they they they're like mm-hmm. spying. He's like a spy, and so he's got to go do spy things. But he's also a ginormous nice. klutz, and so things go wrong, obviously. <laughs> all the time so yeah yeah that sounds like good stuff um the one that usually ends up on our house is um there's a thing called um forged in fire and it's a bunch of guys it's sort of like a reality tv show where they're all making knives and they're competing against each other to make these (laughs) knives cooler than the guy next to you um and they're they're manly dudes. They're blacksmiths. They're not like these. It's not like you're watching, you know, The Bachelorette or something, and they're all a bunch of girls catfighting or anything. It's just legit guys just <laughs> making making weapons that... and making them in three hours. It's the most epic show ever because they then they have to like test them and they like basically try to destroy their knives. And they're like slicing, slicing and dicing. It, it is so, it's so cool. It makes me want to be a blacksmith. That's what it wants me. That's what it makes me want. To be. <laughs> that does sound fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's that's usually what ends up. The other thing they've been, my family's been watching is um, like baking shows, like competition baking shows. And I usually skip those, but it is on TV. <laughs> we we don't need a bake. <laughs> we don't need a baking show at our house because. Um, one of my sisters is a chef, and so she, if she has time and she has something she wants to make, she will make it. And so, if we have the stuff, for it. Nice. <laughs> so, so we don't we don't have to watch nice. baking shows. Uh, yeah, all that drama. <laughs> okay, nice. All right, so last last form of media, um, video games. What is your like go to video games you like to play, or do you play video games, or are there games you're just I like, eh, play nah, not a video game. about that much video games, so very small amount. Yeah. Um. 
I um the my favorite one that I've playing is called Battle for Westnoth, and it's like a free online game. And it's sort of it's a combat game that's strategy. And so you have you get a turn and you fight the people, you fight your enemies, and then um the enemies can come and fight you. Okay. And then it can either be multiplayer or it can be single player. But it's pretty fun. Um, I probably play more than, than you do. Um, I The big ones I play, um, probably Rocket League. Um, I play that with a couple guys from Patmos. Um, the, one, the big one that's been coming up lately, though, has been a game called Rise of Nations. Very cheap game. You can get it on anywhere for like six bucks um, online. Shows up at your house. Um, but it's like a battle game, and it was made in 2002, I want to say, but I can still get my friends from um, three or four hours away, and we all just hook up our internet together and play against the computer, um, and it's quite enjoyable. We we have, a, you start off as like your own little nation, and you start building up your resources to get yourself an army, um, and then once you get your army built up, then you have to try and take over the land map and the the known world as a team um and we figured out we can take on some really tough opponents as long as it's equal uh yeah. like playing field but as soon as there's they have one more guy than we do we get we get rolled because we just can't we just can't figure for that fourth guy who's just bringing his army in um like my mo is i need to be ready by 15 minutes into the game i have to be ready to defend myself because these guys are coming down on us in 15 minutes. Sometimes it's earlier, which is unfortunate. But yeah, that's a very enjoyable game. Um, I would recommend it. Is that sounds like fun. Um, All right. So uh, let us get in to our Bible time. Um, so let's get into our Bible time. Um, we are going to be in... Where are we going to be today, um, Adrian? We Owens. are going <laughs> sure. to be in First Corinthians. I'm not. First Corinthians ten. Um, First Corinthians ten, nine through thirteen. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow. Well, actually, I'll start off two verses ahead. So at seven. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, but we are no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, he will not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols, and so, by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. So, um, do you want to start with your thoughts, or should I go with mine? Um, okay. Go ahead. So, Go ahead. um, it's very interesting this this passage. Um, um, and in that time and place, um, if I remember correctly, the before your um, Jesus, the Jews were not allowed to eat meat offered to idols. Um, yeah. however, when Jesus came, um, a lot of things that like the old law said, Jesus um was able to break. And so one of those things was eating food offered to idols. And so in this passage, um, John, John, not John, Paul, is saying um, that um, even though we know that we can eat, even though we know we can eat meat or do something that, um, that um, other people can look into it and say, oh, no. This is something you're doing wrong because, like the Gentiles, yeah. the Gentile believers, they would probably do this um, quite easily 
whereas the Jewish believers would um, look on it with disdain because they were they um, grew up learning that they shouldn't do it. And I find that this topic actually can apply to more than just food offered to idols because there's not that many places around here anymore that you're going to find food offered to idols. Yeah. I'm sure that there are quite a few, but they're, they're not like obvious like they used to be. But this can also like go into like what we watch and what we read and what we listen to. Um, so yeah. some of my music I listen to, another person could say, oh, that's not, you shouldn't be listening to that music because it doesn't, it doesn't mention God. It doesn't say God's name. It doesn't imply God. Yeah. Um, it's just a love song. Um, whereas, um, whereas technically there's nothing wrong with that music. I'm not. I'm not really gaining anything spiritual from it, but I'm not losing anything spiritual from it either. Um, and then same with like movies and books. Um, and so yeah. Um, so, but this passage is saying that if the music I listen to, if I was listening to it with another person, and somehow that music causes them to sin, I shouldn't do it. Because, um, so that's kind of why um, one of my main rules about listening to music is that if an artist has an explicit song, I'm not going to listen to that artist. Because, um, yeah. because even though their music might be great, I don't want to accidentally infuse my mind with the bad lyrics. I don't want to accidentally get other people hearing these, those bad lyrics. Um, so that's my thoughts on this. What are yours? Yeah, um, I think you nailed it on the head. It's uh, it, it's willing to give up things for brothers and sisters, even if um, you know, even if we still want it. It's it's this idea of dying to self that the Bible really portrays through is you know being willing to lay down your liberty for your brothers because um, there's going to come times that you're going to have to do that. Um, I've had times in my life where. I've had friends who are not allowed to go to movie theaters. They're just not. They weren't allowed to. Their parents said it's wrong and it's this and that. And I invited them to go and watch a movie. And they didn't tell me that they weren't allowed to watch a movie until we were in the car driving towards the movie theater. And they said, oh, you know, my parents don't really like that we go to movie theaters. So I had a choice in that moment. Do I break this kid's conscience that he's been told all of his life it's wrong? to uh go to movies or do we just go somewhere else like go putt putt so guess what we did we went and went, went putt putt because um putt putt has he wasn't banned from from playing putt putt he was banned from going to movies so you know you kind of sometimes have to do that does that mean that i never go to a movie now because my friend doesn't wasn't allowed to go to movies no of course not but when i'm around him i have to make sure that we're not going to movies we're not not putting him in a situation where he'll feel like he's breaking his conscience um, and that's just a, it's just a difference of, of liberty, but being willing to set aside your liberty because is there anything sinful about going to a movie theater in and of itself? No, but there are innuendos, things that could lead you. You could go to a movie theater and end up watching something you shouldn't watch. Um, so in terms of being wise is sacrificing for your brother and sister and putting those aside for that time. Um, and yeah, you're right. When it comes to, to music, when it comes to media, it's so easy to get caught into what we watch or what we say or see or do, but setting those things aside for our brothers and sisters, um, and serving them is the, uh, is the best thing we can do, not only for, uh, for them in terms of making sure they don't fall into sin, but also um, there's times when, when we have to do that in our own lives of giving up those things, those liberty things that aren't technically wrong, but they might lead us down a path that... Yeah, and also it could lead others down a path that they shouldn't go down as well. Yep. Yeah, you have to be careful of that. So that has been our uh, Bible study. That's been our podcast for today. Thank you so much, Adrian, for uh, filling in for Brendan and uh, coming on. And it, I had an enjoyable time. Hopefully we'll have you on soon. 
Um, and hopefully you all will keep listening to us as we go forward into uh, a bright and sunny future and new year here in 2023. So thank you all. Have a lovely day. We'll see you next time.